welcome uh, to the Print Audit Virtual Roadshow. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Rob Thiessen. I'm the VP of Sales and Good Times here at Print Audit. And I'm joined by Paul Georgie, who is our Customer Success Manager and knower of all things related to printing. Uh, welcome, Paul. We're also uh, privileged to have uh, Wes McDonald from Focus MPS uh, joining us and participating in the webinar, as well as Ken Stewart from Fotizo, who will also be adding uh, to the content as well. So uh, to begin with, I just want to kind of set the expectations here a little bit. The purpose of this webinar is to provide some insights into why user management is critical to MPS success. And uh, before I go into it, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping because uh, there is a uh, question and answer period that we're going to have at the end of the, the webinar. Uh, and we invite you to log your questions into the webinar console so that we can review them and uh, pick your questions for answering at the end of the uh, session. So please feel free to log questions into the uh, webinar console and we'll likely address those questions after uh, the webinar is completed. Now, uh, for starting purposes, I guess uh, what I'd like to do is look at the, the obvious question here, and that is, why is user management critical to MPS success? For some companies, the uh, critical issue is printer abuse. And uh, for others, it's about the toner consumption by the individuals in their company. Uh, now, uh, there's also potentially the new functionality that's being built into printer devices that makes this a relevant question. But um, whatever your perspective is, there is one simple common denominator, and that is that printers don't print. People print. And it's true that they make choices when they do, and those choices including, uh, include you know, whether they should print or not, what they should print, where and how. Now, understanding the user's behavior and the processes involved when they press the print button has many benefits and those benefits flow to both customers and dealers. So let's look at first at the benefits to customers. Information is critical. Uh, just about every MPS engagement starts with an assessment and of course you can't manage printing if you can't measure it. So the information gathering for any MPS engagement is uh, critical and gathering user information is especially important because uh, as they say the devil is in the details. Control is another element uh, associated with user management and control over user access and the document output uh, is very, very important because that's where people are spending money. And of course, associated with that spend is the ability to guarantee savings. So uh, we're going to show you in this webinar how we drill down into certain types of behavior and through uh, understanding that behavior and through the implementation of some type of uh, control such as rules-based printing or perhaps a secure and follow me print capability at that point you're able to reduce costs in a way that is virtually guaranteed for your customers so these are all very uh, substantial benefits that flow to the customer and I'll give you an example of how that could work uh, we've gathered statistics at Print Audit on millions and millions of jobs and uh, we've looked at some of the uh, behaviors that are uh, sticking out and consistent across the board. First of all, we find that 60% of all pages printed are output to single function printers. So this nice big chunk of blue pie here is all the printing that's going to single function printers. Of course, uh, there's many other options that uh, users have at their disposal, but uh, for at least 60% of the time, they're sending jobs to single function printers. Now, along with that, we also recognize that 42% of the pages that are being printed to those single function printers can be accounted for in jobs of 50 pages or more. So think about it. Uh, that 42% of the 60 actually makes up 25% of the total print volume that's being printed in the environment. And uh, that can be accounted for in jobs of 50 pages or more going to single function printers. So if you were to address just that block of printing, uh, you could actually have a fairly significant leverage point on cost savings your environment. And uh, what would be the, the price to be paid for that? Well, 
not very much at all because uh, statistics also show that those 50 page plus jobs only make up 1% of all print jobs printed in the environment. So if you look at one out of 100 jobs, you can affect 25 out of 100 pages. Pretty significant leverage there, and that's just a, an insight as to how we would help customers save money by understanding where those pages are being printed. Now, I also mentioned that there was benefits that flow to the dealer, and those benefits include consultative selling. Um, the user information when presented to the end users really commands their attention and uh, you know we had an example of a dealer very recently who went into an RFP and he was one of uh, roughly 10 or 12 uh, dealers that were participating in the RFP but he was the only one that actually included user management as part of their bid and at that point uh, the RFP was with a large school district. The school district actually rescinded the RFP and said, you know, now that you've presented us with this user management aspect, there's really no point in continuing with the RFP because none of these other companies uh, presented us with any user management capabilities and we're interested in that element, um, you know, to, to a degree that uh, we don't think we can move forward with the uh, equipment RFP. So that's just an example uh, of how the user information can command their attention. This is also designed to enhance ROI uh, and ensure the success of your products and services. We really want to make your equipment shine and we're able to do so by controlling user access and understanding it first and foremost of course but also controlling and directing that, um, that access. Finally there's added revenue uh, streams that could be enjoyed and might to some extent be enjoyed by you now, uh, but uh, this is a significant benefit to user management and it's something that many companies aren't participating in now. I'll give you an example though for many of you who are using uh, uh, user management tools now. Uh, there is a difference in the revenue and that would be a difference between purchase revenue, let's say, and a software as a service revenue. I'm give, showing you an example here of uh, two different revenue streams. The first, uh, which is the blue line, uh, which is a linear line along the bottom there, showing the uh, net profit associated with uh, purchases of user management software. Uh, essentially, we're looking at $5,000 in gross sales per month at a 30% margin over three years. And you can see there's a consistent $1,500 profit each month um, given those uh, circumstances. Over three years, that's a purchase profit of $54,000. Now, juxtapose that against a software as a service revenue which uh, initially starts out in the negative because of course there's a subscription associated with that, um, that uh, plan. But the idea is if you're adding um, $700 worth of billable charges per month within your customer base, that grows over time and uh, has a significant impact on your bottom line because you know after three years with that type of consistency, you're looking at a $21,000 per month revenue, and that's profit, okay, pure profit. And over three years, we're looking at a difference of $376,000 in profit earned versus $54,000 in profit earned. So for those of you who are a little bit skeptical at the, the potential of this revenue stream, um, perhaps this might change your mind because right now, uh, as a small plug at this point, um, our premier dealers are enjoying this uh, slope and graph on the line and many of them are uh, achieving this uh, very successfully right now and do so um, within three to six months of joining the program. So we're seeing this trend in dealers now and it's a significant one. So that's just a little introduction to some of the concepts and topics that we're going to be talking about here today. Uh, I'm now going to turn over uh, control and uh, the presentation to uh, Wes McDonald, who as I said is with Focused MPS, and he's here to talk to you about the um, assessment process. So Wes, take her away. Thank you very much, Rob, and uh, thank you very much for everyone attending uh, today's session. So the first slide just says a little bit about me. I'm sure that uh, some of us on the call have uh, worked with each other. And what I want to talk to you about today is uh, what I've seen in the world of really doing assessments. So 
Focus MPS, our whole mandate is to help dealers uh, do better assessments. And of course, what leads the front in that is the kind of information that we can uh, provide. So part of it is the, uh, the same old, same old, as I call it in the title, is that you know, in the early days when I started with Printfleet, uh, kind of machined it, it was new and it was novel, and um, you know, Printfleet, uh, Print Audit, FM Audit, and the others, you know, got into the game. But the truth of the matter is, most dealers now are looking at some kind of machine data when they're when they're doing assessments for customers. And Rob gave a very good example of how using user data can actually sort of put you ahead of that, right? Now. Some of the things that we look at is how do we save customers money? And I know from uh, the dealers that I've worked with over the years that the typical model is to go in with an assessment and recommend some, you know, consolidation, um, you know, consolidation of their environment. Why do they do that? Well, single manufacturer to streamline who they're working with, uh, fewer printers so easier management of the environment, and more consolidation to make sure that they're getting you know, more use out of the devices and increasing utilization. And that sounds like a very common story. That's what we tell the customer, um, but we have to ask ourselves in our community, why do we do that? And the real answer um, has more to do with the fact that it's easy. And that's what we're terrified of is, you know, longer sales cycles and, and complications in the account. The problem is because it's easy is that uh, everyone gets to do it. The other problem with it is that close rates uh, typically in an MPS assessment engagement are around 30%. And that means 70% of the time we're not, you know, successful in those accounts. And the question is, you know, why does that happen? Um, oftentimes, if it's that simple, customers are very prone to going out and getting a competitive quote because there's many other people that do it exactly the same way. Um, certainly, whenever we consolidate, we see a resistance from the end users uh, for having their printer taken away. Whenever I conduct assessments and I, you know, walk into an area and someone's got a printer on their desk, the first words out of their mouth are, you're not here to take my printer, are you? So there's internal resistance, and sometimes you'd be surprised um, at just how much impact that end user resistance can have when you're, you know, trying to do a consolidation play only. And of course, there's the issue of cost up front. Um, that typically when we're consolidating an environment, we're getting rid of uh, capital assets they've already paid for, and we're recommending that they put something in which they you know, now have to think about a purchase decision for you know, again. And everyone's doing it this way, so if there's no way to differentiate ourselves, there's no way to you know, kind of set ourselves uh, in a different uh, part of the pack, um, it comes down to margin, and we are going to get squeezed on you know, price. Obviously, there's a better way, and what I've seen using user data, and I'm going to give you some examples of user data that I've actually incorporated into uh, some assessments. The idea of what kinds of jobs are they printing, uh, Rob was talking earlier about being able to go after you know, a very small portion of print jobs that have a dramatic impact on the amount of volume that's being produced, and those are exactly the kind of things that I look for in the assessment process. The only way I can get that kind of detail and get the customer to agree that we can do something about it uh, is with that user data. What kinds of jobs are they printing? So for example, if I know what portion of their color output is being generated from Outlook, in other words, email you know, print simply because of a small blue hyperlink, then that's an area that I can go after to help them save money. And color is typically a very good place to go to uh, to try and find cost savings for the customers without digging into our margin. Uh, what kind of waste are they producing? So how many you know, versions of documents are they printing, you know, et cetera? Of the people in the office, who are the ones that are printing the most color? And are they people that you know, should be printing the most color? You know, it's very helpful for a customer to see a top 10 list of those that are printing the most color and breaking it down even further into you know, what they're printing uh, color and why they're you know, printing that in color. So I guess one of the other big things is that there is a um, level of complexity which is increased into the assessment process whenever you uh, introduce uh, user information. And the question is, why would we do that? Probably the biggest one is uh, increasing uh, win rates. So when we go to customers and talk about their workflow, and that's kind of a, um, you know, a magic word that encompasses a lot of different things in our industry right now, but as we start to look at uh, workflow in the environment, there's no way we can do that without looking at user information. Now, the other thing to be aware of is it doesn't have to be vertically focused. And when I say vertically focused, just to give you an example, uh, from the time a patient walks into a hospital uh, to the time that uh, the triage team deals with them through the doctor 
uh, through the time that they're released, there's a whole paper process that's involved with that, with that, um, you know, that vertical in the hospital. That's not what I'm talking about when I talk about horizontal workflow. Horizontal workflow is much easier. You're basically looking at uh, workflows that impact um, everyone, no matter what kind of vertical that they that they come from. So one good example is uh, email printing. What are they uh, printing? What portion of it is uh, email? Um, you know, fax services. How many people are uh, still using traditional fax machines versus uh, some kind of digital uh, desktop fax? Um, you know, method. Um, secure release uh, printing is another great example. And those are things that we can sort of attack in the assessment regardless of, of the vertical. Now when I talk about those uh, win rates, I just want to uh, point you to a statistic from uh, you know, a good friend of mine who I've worked with in this space for a lot of years. And his practice, he's combined both doing the assessment uh, with using uh, user data in those assessments and attacking workflow and increased his close rates uh, 60 to 70 percent. And I'd like to pause there for a second because when you think of it now, we've actually, by using user data in the assessment process properly, we're reversing our win rates. So instead of winning only 30 percent, we're winning 70 percent. And that's probably the most significant reason for us as a dealer community to start looking at you know, incorporating that user data into our process. Uh, again, because I'm in the assessment space, I teach people how to use uh, digital assessment tools. And what you're seeing now is a screenshot of an example of one that I've done uh, using AsketDB by incorporating uh, some user uh, data information. And on the floor plan, uh, what you can start to see is little icons of people as well as icons of the multifunction devices and printers. And you'll notice that there are uh, lines going from the people uh, to the devices that they're actually printing to. What you also notice is that surrounding the people um, are the types of volumes that they're producing. And in this case, it's on a monthly basis. So you can see the one user on the left is doing 349 color pages a month and no black and white, which is curious. And uh, the user kind of on the right side is doing 106 black and white pages and one color page a month. So they look like they've got a nice balance. And yet the third user is only doing 188 pages of, of black and white and zero color. So right away, by looking at this user data, I'm seeing something that I wouldn't have seen before, which is I've got one user that is primarily responsible for all of the color you know, in that departmental area. And the lines show me to which devices that they're you know, actually printing uh, you know, to as well, which is important because we want to understand what they're doing. Further than just looking at uh, the graphical interface of the people, with this user information, we can actually work with the customer and provide information on a person-to-person -person basis. And this is critical. It's happened to me on a few occasions where um, companies have said that the, the reason they haven't incorporated sort of departmental chargebacks is because they had people internally that were complaining that other people were using their devices. In other words, in the marketing department, sometimes the sales department or the finance group has to use their device because it has the best color for you know, doing uh, customer presentations. Well, by understanding the user data and by tracking that, um, they can now actually do 100% um, accurate departmental billing based on the users that belong to you know, those, uh, those departments. So it's a very powerful set of information that you can work with the customer to you know, help them get some of that back internally as well. So for the customer, I mean, for us, we've looked at increasing our win rates and being able to show them savings and find savings in other areas than just our margin, right? One of the big areas is waste. And most times when I go into an environment, the typical customer, uh, their volumes, 25 to 30 percent of those volumes, are literally just wasted, uh, orphaned, or abandoned you know, pages, right? The other thing is the area is color. And it's eye-opening for uh, customers when they see that although their volume may be less than 25 percent color volumes total, that sometimes that means their color cost, in other words, their cost contribution from color and their overall uh, print costs for the year are 50 to 60 percent, and that's usually quite surprising for customers to take them through it. So it's a really good area to, to go in and find additional savings for the customer. And uh, the other thing user data uh, allows us to do is to take that baby step into um, working with our customers to help them better understand and use uh, their devices and their people uh, in a workflow scenario. And that's only going to increase as we start to look at the introduction of BYOD uh, consumerization of IT uh, assets within the environment, that understanding workflow is going to be 
you know, more critical than ever as we have more and more devices, you know, entering these environments. So what does it kind of look like? I've just got a quick example for you here of one that I actually worked on and using user data. What we looked at is that their annual print spend was about $281,000. And by optimizing the fleet in the traditional way, in other words, going in and looking at some consolidation and getting rid of some devices and moving them to um, a compatible toner, that we found 26% savings. Most people would look at that and say 26% savings, that's you know phenomenal. And I would agree that it is. That's $73,000 a year for this customer in this particular situation. But keep in mind, there's other dealers that are going into this account and showing them basically the same kind of optimization strategy and probably similar savings. So unfortunately, with this example, although the savings are great, I'm still on a level playing field. What I did in addition, uh, additionally in this account was looked at their workflow and looked at their user data and discovered that there was an additional $92,000 in savings that simply was not being looked at. Once we dug into it and started analyzing the user data and the customer agreed that we could uh, do some things to, uh, to take some action on that, we're looking now at $92,000 in these policy savings which we incorporated, which is all based on their user data and how the users are printing and $73,000 on the optimization piece for a total of $165,000. So the portion of savings that you, know, you can get to in a situation like this now goes from 26%, which everyone you know, within a few uh, you know, savings percentages are, are going to be offering, uh, to 58%, which you know, we were the only people on the actual, um, uh, who actually bid on this business uh, who could actually offer those you know, kind of savings. And it all started with and ended with being able to first see their user data and then to be able to, you know, correct it, right? So the other good news in this situation is because hopefully uh, as a dealer you're thinking, well, good grief, do I really want to give them, you know, 58% savings? And the answer there is, of course not. Uh, if you're this sophisticated and you are helping your customers at a much deeper level than your competitors, then you can demand some margin back for that. And you don't have to give it all away, but it certainly gives you a lot more uh, freedom to look at uh, which areas that you're going to, you know, keep margin in, and how you're going to, you know, extend that to the customer. So thank you very much for listening to that part on it. Again, um, you know, in the real world of conducting assessments and working with dealers on building their assessment practices, um, I can tell you that one of the most significant things you can do uh, to raise yourself above the crowd is to make sure that you're getting user data and using that user data in your assessment process. So with that, I'd like to, uh, to thank you again, and I'm going to hand things off to uh, Paul Georgi um, at Print Audit. Thank you very much, Wes. I appreciate that. Uh, some insightful information there. Um, what we're going to talk about here is the, uh, the four questions that can easily be answered through an assessment. Um, as you know, going through a user assessment makes you more of a consultative uh, person to your customer, having that trusted business uh, partnership is key in any type of engagement. Where we start is we start with the Print Audit 6 uh, installation, which is a client-based installation. And we do it as a client-based installation for one uh, particular reason. Printers don't print, users print. And what best way to track a user than right from the workstation they're sitting at? This gives you that total comprehensive view into what the end users are printing and it gives you that dynamic approach to say it's more than just the speed and feed of a device, it's more than just the location of the device, it's the actual user input into that device. Um, in the particular case that I want to outline for you guys, uh, what we did is we did a small little assessment on a medical industry uh, vertical. And what it was, was just in a five-day period, we found that 410 users had printed some pretty dynamic documents. We're talking about 19,000 pages and about 56, sorry, 56,000 pages, which were 19,000 documents. Uh, that resulted in about 15% color ratio, so that's pretty significant. But not only did we do this as a 30,000 foot view, we also identified the top 10 users and abusers. And if you'll notice from this chart here, the first thing that we saw was one user printing nearly 11% of this 56,000 page volume. Not only was this end user printing such a significant amount of volume, we also discovered that this one particular user was responsible for 68% of the color usage. So if you think about that breakdown, that's pretty significant for one, one single user to be doing. 
uh, which brought to question more questions. What exactly is this user doing? Why are they printing this way? And not only that, but where are they printing? What we discovered through a couple of reports from Print.at6 was this one user was printing to one particular color device. It was a low input HP device, which has a fairly high operating cost. In fact, what we, what we estimated uh, without the digging too deep into the cost was it was about $730 every single week in printing. Pretty significant uptick when you think about it. This is something that obviously nobody knew about. The only way you're going to be able to discover this is through user management and user-based tracking. So what does this mean? Where should this employee be printing? Should they have been printing to that color device or should they have been printing all these documents that they've been printing, this massive amount of volume, to an MFP? Where does that information go? Which is the least cost effective? Is she located in a, in a close location to either one of these printers? Should a printer be moved? Should a print policy be uh, put in place to uh, govern and make sure that whenever this end user is printing, they are printing to the most effective and most cost effective uh, solution out there. But let's take a step back for a second and let's look at not just what this one individual user is, but let's understand the department that she's in. So in this one department, is she printing a similar? Are all the employees in that uh, staff operating at the highest cost? Are they printing to the right printers? Do they have a mixture of printers that they can choose from? Why is this one person printing to this one printer? These are all questions that will continually come up when you dig deeper into the data itself. Um, what you see in front of you here are two reports from Print.at6 software. Uh, the first one is one that we show in most of our customer facing presentations and this is the sort of standard around uh, workflow and breakdown of printing. What we typically see in an environment is that 2% of the time an end user hits print, they're printing a large size job and that's a job over 25 pages. And that usually consists of 36% of the page output. So again, two times out of 100, an end user hits print, takes up about 36% of the volume. Not a lot of user impact, but high, high volume impact. In this particular case, what we found was this one user, 21% of the time, when they hit print, was a large size job, resulting in 92% of their output. So it sort of blows that industry stat right out of the water in this particular user workflow. This is a great way to go back to your customer. Once you have this data, you can go back to the customer and say, listen, we understand that this user is a high volume print uh, user. We understand that this person is in a department where they do have a mixture of printers, but they are only using one printer, and it seems to be one of the higher cost printers. Uh, we look at the number of times they print versus the number of pages they're consuming, and we see that they are using a high amount of large size documents. And that brings into a couple of questions. What exactly are they printing? Why are they printing from their emails? Or why are they printing from all recipes? Uh, it's exactly some of the stuff that you guys can dig deeper into and understand a little bit more of the workflow. Should they be printing emails in color? Should this person be printing from Internet Explorer on the company dime? These are all questions that can be answered with the uh, digging a little bit deeper into the data that Printout at 6 collects. Not only why are they printing, but what are they printing? In this case, what we found was this one particular user had a very high volume of repetitive jobs. In fact, it was so repetitive, we found out that on average they were printing this about six to seven minutes intervals. So you can imagine a 106 color page unit every five or six minutes can certainly add up during, a, uh, during an average work week. Again, this uh, printing workflow was going to a single function, uh, smaller color printer at a very high operating cost. The questions that you can ask your customer, and these are great, uh, great things to go in with, is say, we recognize that this user has this workflow. We've recognized that this user is, is printing you know, a single type of document, very high volume, very consistent. Should they have this sent out to a repo graphics, 
uh, department, should this be sent to a higher volume multifunction printer or a color device, um, where should this document go because currently the current process is showing that this is a very particular user who's not going outside of their, um, their realm. Personally, I like to call it the print hobbit because they're not really leaving their shire. When you look at this and you've got all these questions, and again, the study of uh, the user workflow, the printing process, it helps provide the answers to who's printing, where they're printing, and what they're printing. Why and how should take uh, why and how this printing should take place is up to you and the customer to determine. But you can't determine that type of information until you've actually collected all this additional data. The study of user workflow. Um, helps you understand this and helps you come up with a, uh, a good way to establish a print policy and help your customer reduce and govern what actually goes on. In this example, what we came up with was some very, very comprehensive and uh, easy rules for the entire organization to follow. And it was very simple. No printing anything over 25 pages to a single function or locally connected printer. What we're able to do is we're able to move 25% of the entire volume this environment was doing, not, um, not even taking into account that one particular user who had literally 92% of that volume. And it went over to a multifunction printer, and that reduced their cost pretty significantly. We also did this with color, so anything over 25 pages had to go to an MFP as well, reducing their cost by another 32% by migrating from a high cost to a low cost printer. On top of that, one of the things this customer was pretty upset about was the high amount of color printing from emails, and we were able to put in a rule to enforce a print policy to say you need to uh, print emails in black and white. Uh, not color, and we converted 10% of the color volume uh, down to black and white. And then additional on top of that, anything multi-page that was from email or from the internet uh, resulted in a duplex rule to say, hey, please duplex this information. You don't need to print it on both sides of the, of the page. In this environment and under this study, we came up with this comprehensive reporting for the customer. We came up with a comprehensive set of rules and some suggestions and optimization. Without moving and without replacing a single device, and this was just having the software that was already installed for the assessment activated into an active type of management, we were able to reduce the print volumes and reduce the operating cost of this customer by 35%, which resulted in a $91,000 savings. Now, again, most people on this call are most likely interested in selling devices and want to be able to get the customer under a managed contract. In this case, with this $91,000 in savings, they now have the trust of this customer. They now are a, are a confidential advisor to what equipment this customer should buy. So you've got to remember, something like this, when you're looking at a user assessment, will pull through uh, equipment, will pull through long-term contracts, will make that customer rely on you for any type of hard output. And that's what we're talking about today. We understand that volumes are being reduced. We understand that device counts are going down. So why not try and take that customer and approach them as an exclusive contractor? Uh, that's everything I have to show for you guys. I'm going to pass it over to uh, Ken Stewart now from Fotizo. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. I'd like to also uh, welcome everybody again today. And what we're going to be touching on here a little bit is are, are a few compelling data points that, that I think are really going to help you in your marketplace today as well, too. And so I'd imagine that all of us here today are, are pretty successful in our own right. But I'd imagine that you're also here to learn how to take it to the next level as well, too. So our focus today is on how to achieve you know, additional success through increasing the focus on user management, the integration of user management into what we do. Now, the question really then is if success is achieving what you desire, what is it that you desire? And I think it's a pretty compelling statement here today to say that at the end of the day, what all of us are very interested in is increasing not only top line revenues in the account, but also how to generate additional profit uh, for your business as well too. So the question we're going to dive into a little bit further with some of these data points is how to achieve more profitable revenues, right? 
So as I said, we're going to look at a few data points here. And what I want to show you here on the screen today is probably the busiest slide that we've got here. But in essence, what we're saying is we have a tough market here. In the light blue, what we're seeing is the traditional office printing marketplace. And you'll notice that line is flat. And we even predict that in the near future, it should actually begin to decline in level two in a slight fashion. Most of us are hearing this doom and gloom type of statement. But you really don't have to buy into the fact that everything is doom and gloom. In fact, you know, against this downward pressure of decreasing page volumes, of decreasing device placements, of price erosion, and everything else that's going on out there, what we see in our decision maker tracking study, as well as in our market forecasts that we look at, uh, it, 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 it's compelling evidence that says that MPS page volumes are increasing. Well, so what does that mean? that really translates into the fact that effective managed print services providers today are taking market away from the old provincial players in the marketplace. It's pretty compelling to say that you have that kind of opportunity in front of you today too. And with tools and, and, and the ability to look at user management, I'd suggest you have an additional opportunity to differentiate yourself in your marketplace. So you really have to make a choice. You have to make a choice today. And I say this because I see so many dealers and resellers that I talk to that are in this squeeze zone. You have to choose between being either high volume, which indicates that you're going to be able to operate at an effective scale. You're going to have to be able to operate at low margins. And you're going to have to continually churn customers on a regular basis, or, or at least take those customers and churn the transaction through. And that's an effective model. Okay. But what I think we're talking about today is really how to be a high value player to your customers and to your market and to generate high margin, high profit. I think that's really, at the end of the day, what we're all interested in doing because it, it, it makes us feel better about ourselves. It makes us, it gives us pride in what we can take to the marketplace. So what you have to do, your job really at the end of the day is to find gaps in your customer need. Now, this data that I'm showing you on the screen today comes from a portion of what we call our decision maker tracking study. And so Fatizo for the last five years has tracked some 5,000 decision makers across companies of all types and sizes around nine different countries. And this data here is specifically from North America. And so what we're showing you here is we ask the customer two questions. The first question that we ask them is on the left, in the dark blue, we say, what is it that you're expecting or, or considered extremely important in your buying process? How do you choose your partner? And what they say is that you know when we ask them about print, is print policies or are, are print rules important to you? Is change management important to you? We see an extremely high percentage of customers that say, indeed, it actually is. However, you'll notice in the light blue bar, there's a huge gap that's occurring here. So what we see is that customers are, are really able to take the benefit of things like, for instance, uh, device consolidation and device fleet management. In your typical fleet management types of activities that we've all become accustomed to, they're seeing that at a much higher rate. The gaps that are there today in the customer portfolio is that nobody is helping them with print policies, with print rules, with sustainability programs. And appalling 17% of customers alone are getting change management help. And, and, and again, this doesn't have to be complicated, you know, big picture enterprise change management concepts we're talking about here. What it really boils down to is helping your customer move through transitions and improve their business, helping them focus on solving their problems and helping them overcome their challenges with their users. Because believe it or not, you know, they have political issues going on. I'm sure you've never gotten wrapped up in a customer's political issue. Now, you also have to make sure that you're focused on driving rev revenue opportunities. We talked about this earlier, profitable revenue opportunities for you. But how about profitable revenue opportunities for your customer? So we ask, a custom we ask customers, again, the several sets of questions along with the survey that we talked about. And in this specific question, we're asking them, after you've installed management services, what are the benefits that you've seen? And we can see here that the first three categories, for instance, with centralized, we centralized decision making. We have uh, achieved cost reduction. We do have proactive monitoring. Uh, 
Now, there are, there's arguably still a gap in the marketplace that you can you know, still be different. You can still do this. But I would argue that this high level of saturation that customers are saying they've received these benefits tells us that everybody's offering this, that these have become table stakes today. What I'm not seeing when I look at this data is on the far right-hand side, we talk about business process improvement, the impact to helping you run your business more efficiently and more effectively. So moving from a bottom, a bottom line outlook, a bottom line focus with your customers in only cost savings is limiting you. What I'm suggesting is that you also can focus on top line revenue generation opportunities with your customers as well too. By simply understanding why it is they do what they do, you become embedded in how they go to market. You begin asking questions about, gee, why is it that you have to onboard a customer this way? Why is it that you have to collect bills this way? And, and you can become that trusted advisor to them and command higher dollars and higher margins as well too. So what steps do you have to take to achieve these profitable revenues? There's a couple things you can do really, but at the end of the day, you have a choice again. You can work harder or you can work smarter. You can go out there and continue to try to differentiate yourself on simply offering cost reduction strategies and consolidation strategies as Wes talked about earlier. Or I believe you have a unique opportunity to be different than your competitors. I think that opportunity is closing. So you have to seize it today. I don't think this opportunity, the data that we're seeing suggests that more and more customers are beginning to see these later stages of, of benefit. They're beginning to expect more from you as a provider. And they're beginning to look at everyone offering cost reduction strategies in a price sensitive manner in terms of what they're saying is, is that everybody can offer me cost reduction, so are you going to be more aggressive in your cost reductions? I suggest that you have to begin looking at it in terms of stepping away from that, that talk track a little bit more and helping them also realize how they need to win more customers and how they need to retain more customers as well too. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Rob. Thank you for your time. Thank you, gentlemen. That was uh, really informative. And uh, at this point, I'd open the table to any questions. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the way to ask a question uh, is to raise your hand essentially and I don't see anybody that's raised a hand on the webinar at this point so uh, I don't also have any questions in the inbox so uh, if that's the case then this may simply be the end of the presentation and uh, hopefully we've answered all your questions with the thoroughness of the uh, content uh, but I will pause for just a moment and see if anybody does raise a hand or have any questions Well, at this point, uh, there is a question from Tim. Tim, uh, do you want to go ahead? I've unmuted your microphone. We should be able to hear you now. Um, yeah, Rob, is this being recorded? It is. Yes, you're live on the air, Tim. Cool. Now, it's just, you know, I've got a few people that haven't been able to connect there, so... Um, Sorry to hear that. This. We've got a recording. Um, a couple of my people haven't been able to connect, so if they could... So, uh, Tim, sorry to cut you off there, but uh, we have a recording of this webinar, and so uh, we'll be happy to send out a copy of that recording to you in the future. And anybody else who requires a copy of the, re, uh, uh, the presentation is welcome to contact Print Audit and request that. Now, of course, all of the uh, capabilities that, you, that have been uh, addressed in this presentation are available from Print Audit, and uh, we'll be following up this webinar with an email blast, uh, just communicating some of those capabilities, as well as some offerings from both uh, Focus MPS as well as Fotizo uh, that really, you know, uh, are are geared towards uh, the dealer that's interested in adopting a user management strategy and beginning this process. So uh, once again, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, good luck with your businesses and hope to uh, speak with you soon. Take care now.